I'm a developmental geneticist and I focus mostly on plant genetics, looking at how basic patterns are established in developing leaves. It's sort of an intuition that you have. You're looking at something, you're looking at a plant that has radial leaves or so. How do you ultimately come to an understanding of what this really means and what's happening? And I think you can only do that if you really truly understand how a plant grows, how a plant develops. Long Island on the east coast of the USA. This is the location of the renowned Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory and the scientific home of Maya Timmermans. The molecular geneticist investigates plant growth and her innovative research methods are used in labs across the globe. Her institute has already claimed eight Nobel Prizes, including one for research into maize mutation, one of Timmermans' focus areas. By looking at these mutants and by looking critically at them, you can infer information about how this might work in the organism. It's the information of the plant itself that says a lot. And so it's an intuitive understanding of what you're looking for and then the phenotype that you obtain, how this informs about indeed what the plant develops. Attention is focused on a small plant, Arabidopsis, Thalecress, which is one of the classic model organisms used by plant geneticists. It lends itself to studying the development of leaf cells. The cells on the top of the leaf act as light traps for photosynthesis. The bottom ones deal with gas exchange. What makes this feat possible? The question that we really have is how the top and bottom part of the leaf are specified. And what that does is that allows the leaf to grow out as a flat surface. And so making a flat surface in development is always a complicated problem. And in order to get that, you need communication between these cells. And so we're interested in the communication part. In order to understand how cells communicate, researchers induce mutations at the plant's growth points. Interference results in abnormal growth habits. Under the microscope, you can observe, for example, how Thalecress loses its ability to develop properly on the top and bottom of the leaf. The mutant trichomes grow underneath instead of on the surface. By looking at these mutants, trying to get them from the mutants to the genes that are mutated in these cases, we can identify key players in, in this process of setting up the top and bottom side of the leaf. This development process is driven by a stem cell niche at the leaf base, which contains a kind of control center for plant growth. Timmermans has even discovered particular signal molecules at this point small interfering RNA molecules. Unlike the large messenger RNA molecules, the small RNA are not responsible for producing protein, but for blocking it by specifically silencing the genes. What we discovered is that small RNAs, these are tiny RNAs that are able to uh, silence genes that they have homology to. And what we showed is that they are made in very precise domains in the stem cell niche and then later on also in the leaf and they are able to move from cell to cell to indeed give these coordinates to uh, cells in a growing structure and give them the identification of I need to become this, I have this address in this leaf and I need to differentiate to take on this particular fate. Exactly how the small RNA molecules form the cell and steer its responses are themes that interest applied researchers too, such as for understanding the processes of disease in the body. It's a defense mechanism and you can imagine that being able to move and instruct other cells about being exposed to a particular um, uh, viral in infection would be very helpful. We also think that there is a connection then indeed in instructing cells about prior exposure to the environment. 
Knowing how a plant adapts to its environment and regulates its growth is also of relevance to agriculture. To discover how to increase the yield of useful plants like maize, for instance. And this is based on basic research in genetics. I still do maize genetics myself. You're really interestingly involved with the work that you do. You really look at these plants in depth to see for things that are giving you the phenotype that you're interested in, because you will find lots of mutants, but you want to be specific in your question. The propagation of maize is still done manually. The geneticist isolates the male and female flowers to prevent the plants from pollinating themselves. For the target hybrid, she initially takes pollen from a specific mutant and then uses it to pollinate the female flowers of the target plant. The corns produced by the maize cob are later sown. The advantage of maize is that it is a classical genetic mechanism. And the other advantage of maize is, as opposed to Arabidopsis then, is that it really has a very large meristem. Um, this is the stem cell niche. And also the leaves are much larger, so there are certain things that we can do with maize that we are unable to do with Arabidopsis. Living close to Manhattan is just fantastic. I go into New York and I feel very vibrant and I feel very alive. It's sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting city. You're exposed to diversity from people from all over the world and you can basically experience anything you like. Long Island and New York have been the hub of Timmerman's life for nearly 30 years. Now she is about to leave the Big Apple to take up an Alexander von Humboldt professorship at the University of Tübingen. The freedom to pursue sustainable basic research was a convincing argument for her move. I'm very excited about being able to do something that might, by investing five years, open up entirely new avenues and that will allow me to basically approach it from a more diverse and risky angle. At this point, I really want to understand how cells might perceive a particular signal and how cells do this in, in a way that they can really sense concentration. What precise role do small RNA molecules play in all this? How do they really get from one cell to another? and how is their interaction within the plant cell tissue regulated. Solving this genetic puzzle is Maya Timmerman's project for life.